Palynology, Wikipedia article audio. Palynology is the study of dust and logi or particles that are strewn. A classic palynologist analyses particulate samples collected from the air, from water, or from deposits including sediments of any age. The condition and identification of those particles, organic and inorganic, give the palynologist clues to the life, environment, and energetic conditions that produced them. A History of Palynology Early History 1890s to 1940s 1940s to 1989 1990s to the 21st century Methods of studying palynomorphs Palynomorphs Palynophages Chemical preparation Analysis Applications Sources The term is sometimes narrowly used to refer to a subset of the discipline, which is defined as the study of microscopic objects of macromolecular organic composition, not capable of dissolution in hydrochloric or hydrofluoric acids. It is the science that studies contemporary and fossil palynomorphs, including pollen, spores, orbicules, dinocysts, acritarchs, chitinozoans, and scolicodonts, together with particulate organic matter and kerogen found in sedimentary rocks and sediments. Palynology does not include diatoms, foraminiferans or other organisms with silicious or calcareous exoskeletons. Palynology is an interdisciplinary science and is a branch of earth science and biological science, particularly plant science. Stratigraphical palynology is a branch of micropaleontology and paleobotany, which studies fossil palynomorphs from the Precambrian to the Holocene. The earliest reported observations of pollen under a microscope are likely to have been in the 1640s by the English botanist Nehemiah Grew, who described pollen and the stamen, and concluded that pollen is required for sexual reproduction in flowering plants. By the late 1870s, as optical microscopes improved and the principles of stratigraphy were worked out, Robert Kidston and P. Reinsch were able to examine the presence of fossil spores in the Devonian and Carboniferous coal seams and make comparisons between the living spores and the ancient fossil spores. Early investigators include Christian Gottfried Ehrenberg, Gideon Mantell, and Henry Hopley White. Quantitative analysis of pollen began with Leonard von Post's published work. Although he published in the Swedish language, his methodology gained a wide audience through his lectures. In particular, his Christiania lecture of 1916 was important in gaining a wider audience. Because the early investigations were published in the Nordic languages, the field of pollen analysis was confined to those countries. The isolation ended with the German publication of Gunnar Erdmann's 1921 thesis. The methodology of pollen analysis became widespread throughout Europe and North America and revolutionized quaternary vegetation and climate change research. Earlier pollen researchers include Fru, who enumerated many common tree pollen types, and a considerable number of spores and herb pollen grains. There is a study of pollen samples taken from sediments of Swedish lakes by Tribum. Pine and spruce pollen was found in such profusion that he considered them to be serviceable as index fossils. George F. L. Sarau studied fossil pollen of Middle Pleistocene age from the harbor of Copenhagen. Lagerheim and C. A. Weber appear to be among the first to undertake percentage frequency calculations. The term palynology was introduced by Hyde and Williams in 1944, following correspondence with the Swedish geologist Ernst Antefs, in the pages of the Pollen Analysis Circular. 
Hyde and Williams chose palynology on the basis of the Greek words palouno meaning to sprinkle and pale meaning dust. Pollen analysis advanced rapidly in this period due to advances in optics and computers. Much of the science was revised by Johannes Iverson and Nut Fiegri in their textbook on the subject. Palynomorphs are broadly defined as organic walled microfossils between 5 and 500 micrometers in size. They are extracted from sedimentary rocks and sediment cores both physically, by ultrasonic treatment and wet sieving, and chemically, by chemical digestion to remove the non-organic fraction. Palynomorphs may be composed of organic material such as chitin, pseudochitin, and sporopollenin. Palynomorphs that have a taxonomy description are sometimes referred to as palynotaxa. Palynomorphs form a geological record of importance in determining the type of prehistoric life that existed at the time the sedimentary formation was laid down. As a result, these microfossils give important clues to the prevailing climatic conditions of the time. Their paleontological utility derives from an abundance numbering in millions of cells per gram in organic marine deposits, even when such deposits are generally not fossiliferous. Palynomorphs, however, generally have been destroyed in metamorphic or recrystallized rocks. Typically, Palynomorphs are dinoflagellate cysts, acritarchs, spores, pollen, fungi, scolicodonts, arthropod organs, chitinozoans, and microforums. Palynomorph microscopic structures that are abundant in most sediments are resistant to routine pollen extraction including strong acids and bases, and acetolysis, or density separation. A palynofacies is the complete assemblage of organic matter and palynomorphs in a fossil deposit. The study of the palynofacies of a depositional environment of sediments can be used to learn about the depositional paleo-environments of sedimentary rocks. The term palynofacies was introduced by the French geologist André Combes in 1964. Palynofacies studies are often linked to investigations of the palynology and organic geochemistry of sedimentary rocks. Palynofacies can be used in two ways. Both types of palynofacies studies are used for geological interpretation of sedimentary basins in exploration geology, often in conjunction with palynological analysis and vitrinite reflectance. Chemical digestion follows a number of steps. Initially the only chemical treatment used by researchers was treatment with potassium hydroxide to remove humic substances, deflocculation was accomplished through surface treatment or ultrasonic treatment, although sonification may cause the pollen exine to rupture. The use of hydrofluoric acid to digest silicate minerals was introduced by Asarsen and Granlund in 1924, greatly reducing the amount of time required to scan slides for palynomorphs. Palynological studies using peats presented a particular challenge because of the presence of well-preserved organic material, including fine rootlets, moss leaflets, and organic litter. This was the last major challenge in the chemical preparation of materials for palynological study. Acetolysis was developed by Gunnar Erdmann and his brother to remove these fine cellulose materials by dissolving them. In acetolysis the specimen is treated with acetic anhydride and sulfuric acid, dissolving cellulistic materials and thus providing better visibility for palynomorphs. Some steps of the chemical treatments require special care for safety reasons, in particular the use of HF which diffuses very fast through the skin and, causes severe chemical burns, and can be fatal. Another treatment includes kerosene flotation for chitinous materials. Once samples have been prepared chemically, 
they are mounted on microscope slides using silicon oil, glycerol, or glycerol jelly and examined using light microscopy or mounted on a stub for scanning electron microscopy. Researchers will often study either modern samples from a number of unique sites within a given area, or samples from a single site with a record through time, such as samples obtained from peat or lake sediments. More recent studies have used the modern analog technique in which paleo samples are compared to modern samples for which the parent vegetation is known. When the slides are observed under a microscope, the researcher counts the number of grains of each pollen taxon. This record is next used to produce a pollen diagram. These data can be used to detect anthropogenic effects, such as logging, traditional patterns of land use or long-term changes in regional climate. Palynology can be applied to problems in many fields including geology, botany, paleontology, archaeology, pedology, and physical geography. Palynology is used for a diverse range of applications, related to many scientific disciplines. Because the distribution of acritarchs, chitinozoans, dinoflagellate cysts, pollen, and spores provides evidence of stratigraphical correlation through biostratigraphy and paleoenvironmental reconstruction, one common and lucrative application of palynology is in oil and gas exploration. Palynology also allows scientists to infer the climatic conditions from the vegetation present in an area thousands or millions of years ago. This is a fundamental part of research into climate change. Organic palynophasis considers all the acid-insoluble particulate organic matter, including kerogen, and palynomorphs in sediments and palynological preparations of sedimentary rocks. The sieved or unsieved preparations may be examined using strew mounts on microscope slides that may be examined using a transmitted light biological microscope or ultraviolet fluorescence microscope. The abundance, composition, and preservation of the various components, together with the thermal alteration of the organic matter is considered. Palynomorph palynophasis considers the abundance, composition, and diversity of palynomorphs in a sieved palynological preparation of sediments or palynological preparation of sedimentary rocks. The ratio of marine fossil phytoplankton, together with chitinozoans, to terrestrial palynomorphs can be used to derive a terrestrial input index in marine sediments. Biostratigraphy and Geochronology Geologists use palynological studies in biostratigraphy to correlate strata and determine the relative age of a given bed, horizon, formation, or stratigraphical sequence, paleoecology and climate change. Palynology can be used to reconstruct past vegetation and marine and freshwater phytoplankton communities and so infer past environmental and paleoclimatic conditions, organic palynophasis studies, which examine the preservation of the particulate organic matter and palynomorphs provides information on the depositional environment of sediments and depositional paleoenvironments of sedimentary rocks, Geothermal alteration studies examine the color of palynomorphs extracted from rocks to give the thermal alteration and maturation of sedimentary sequences, which provides estimates of maximum paleo temperatures, limnology studies. Freshwater palynomorphs and animal and plant fragments, including the prasinophytes and desmids can be used to study past lake levels and long-term climate change, taxonomy and evolutionary studies, forensic palynology the study of pollen and other palynomorphs for evidence at a crime scene, allergy studies. Studies of the geographic distribution and seasonal production of pollen, can help sufferers of allergies such as hay fever, melisopalynology, the study of pollen and spores found in honey, 
archaeological palynology examines human uses of plants in the past. This can help determine seasonality of site occupation, presence or absence of agricultural practices or products, and plant-related activity areas within an archaeological context. Bonfire shelter is one such example of this application.